Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Airbus Autopilot. Now an Airbus has a slightly different philosophy when it comes to autopilot than Boeing, and it definitely has a different philosophy than small aircraft such as, you know, propeller-driven Cessnas, but once you kind of get the hang of it, it's really not that much different than a lot of the autopilots you've seen before. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is we're going to go ahead and look at the overall kind of controls and understand why Airbus is so different than um, what you might be used to. First of all, when you kind of float over here to the middle, you'll notice that the buttons kind of all have sort of a similar shape other than the fact some are rounded or notched so that the pilot can feel which one they're grabbing there. But one of the unique things you'll notice about them is the fact that when you look at them from the side, you realize they can be pushed or pulled. Now, the reason this is a little different than you're probably used to is a lot of other aircraft, you know, you simply push the button that you want for the mode, but none of the mode controls are here. All the modes are controlled by simply pushing and pulling on the knob itself. Now, that's a little different. Now, one of the nice things we have for ourselves to make our life a little bit simpler is when you float down to your lovely PFD here, you can see all the different autopilot modes that have been selected prior to your actual departure here. You can see at this point, for example, I've got nothing selected for my pitch or roll. And the other thing we don't have selected is thrust. Now, on an Airbus, and this is a big difference in a lot of other aircraft, your little levers in the middle are thrust levers. Uh, these are basically, if you want to think about it, like a throttle, but what you're really doing is you're selecting what mode you want your airplane's engine to be trying to achieve. The other thing you'll observe is all of the modes in here have a THR, meaning it is automatically thrusting. It basically controls. So when I put my Airbus levers up to here, I'm basically calling for climb level thrust. Put it up to here for flex, and of course, if I want to take off, I push the whole thing forward. You'll notice on a Boeing, for example, I've got no buttons in here to do toga. I simply push the lever up to the toga position and just let it go. Uh, that's a very, very big difference. Uh, one of the things you'll have to note, too, is between our little legs here, or I should say right up here in the front, depending, you'll have this auto thrust button. Now, if I click that on, you'll notice nothing happens. And the reason we have no automatic thrust is because we haven't gotten in the air yet. That's an important point of order here. The other thing you're going to notice now that you've kind of seen a couple different options is the fact that a lot of these different controls here also have little displays above to let you know what's going on. Now, whenever you see this little dot present in any screen, that simply means that the mode is selected to let the computer, basically your FMS, your flight management system, we call it a little different in an Airbus, but it's the same idea, to control what that particular function is. For example, you notice this dot means that the speed is being controlled by the computer. If I were to come over here and uh, right click on this, of course, uh, we can't change it right now because again, we're not in the air or anything like that. I could say I want a manual speed. We'll see that when we get there. Same thing with heading. You know, if I were to left click on this, uh, you'll actually look there, you can push and hold it. You'll notice it's a little bit different now that you have to use the right mouse button in order to change the setting. If you click and hold, it actually breaks it down for you quite nicely. And again, this is a little bit different. Now, I want to change my setting. I'll move my mouse back and forth. If I want to select it, I have to pull it by right uh, pushing down on my middle mouse button. See how that's a little different? And then if I right click on it, that's going to be the equivalent of pushing it in. So you can see right here, I keep jamming on it. And basically what has happened now is I've ordered the computer to go ahead and say, I'm in control here. It just gives you an idea of how that is so different than what you're probably used to. And you can see it's kind of fiddling there between the two different modes as I push it. The other thing you'll notice is over on this side, we have a very similar style arrangement. You'll notice that for my altitude knob, if I right click on this, it's the equivalent of pushing it in. If I middle click on it, it's the equivalent of pulling it out, which would basically allow us to change this mode. So you just have to kind of get the hang of that when you're doing it. And we're going to see that in a minute. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pre-select my altitude here. We're going up to 27,000 today. Keep it nice and simple. Uh, right now, I actually, we can just like a localizer if we wanted, but that's okay. We're just going to let the computer handle this part for us. Because again, as you notice, again, I pull, I want to do it, push, you're going to go and give the computer the control. So now if you come down here on the left, you will notice that our screen has updated itself to now say OP climb and it now says ALT. It is letting us know that it's looking for an altitude and it is doing an open climb. You know, when I come over here and I start cranking on this thing again, like it was before, you can see those modes change, but not on the ground. Let's get in the air so I can stop saying that. So I'm going to go ahead and push my thrust all the way to the toga position. Now you're going to see all sorts of lights come up. You're going to get the thing start flashing and then we're going to start ripping down here. And of course, you've got a little warning thing on the right. Nothing to worry about. There are some avionics glitches that the good folks at INI &I Builds are very familiar with. And not going to lie, the performance on this aircraft is not terribly good as far as uh, a frame rate, I should say. Again, um, for those of you who are curious what I'm packing here, it's the um, i9, it's a 14850K, it's a 4090 GTX, 64 gram. I mean, it's, it's enough. 
but again, we still see performance issues from time to time. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my landing gear. I'm going to gently let this climb. This great thing about an Airbus is this thing just sails. One of the things you'll notice here in the bottom is now has a new option. This is the word runway track. It is actually trying to hold the runway, and that is what this all vertical line now references. We're more than fast enough. I'll go ahead and bring up that one click of facts. And again, I haven't touched my controls yet, so that's the nice thing about an Airbus. And you can see we're basically settling at this kind of 12, 13 degree. Right now, of course, we have SRS, Alt, and of course, we have Runway Track. We're still on that mode because we have no other modes available yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to enjoy my nice little climb up to this, and you can see Open Climb is selected, and it's yelling at me to go ahead and switch this to the climb position. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this back to the climb position, just like that, and I'm going to go ahead and engage the automatic pilot. There we go. So now what we can do, of course, is if we come over here, is we have new options. Now, if I were to right-click this now, you will notice that this little dot turned on, simply saying that the computer is now in control of my roll program. Uh, one of the interesting things we see here, other than the fact that I can't quite get this thing on the... There it goes. <laughs> Good luck setting up your throttle with this airplane, by the way. Well, the other thing you probably observe is the fact that we're not going anywhere near where we're supposed to be going. You know, the reason we're not is on account of the fact that I'm not pointed at the course that I need to be on. So this is a good opportunity for me to come over here again. And what I will do is I'll middle mouse button on it to pull it out to basically say, hey, let me have control here. I'm now going to order my aircraft to go ahead and turn us around because we need to get on course here at some point today. And we're just going to enjoy this nice leisurely climb as we go around. Now, remember, at any time, I can right-click on this to basically switch back over to computer controlling of my role. But keep in mind, if you don't have something that's lined up, again, our course is way behind us right now, uh, you would not be able to operate this directly. Now, one of the downsides to this, of course, is you're sitting here going, okay, so you've selected a heading of 42 degrees. You can see we're executing our nice gentle turn. We're going up to 40. Again, you'd probably be on some sort of departure procedure right now. I tried to keep this flight as simple as possible for that particular purpose. You can see we're over here on this heading of 40, and we're taking that nice thing. Now, if I come back over here and I give the computer control of my autopilot again by right-clicking on it, you'll notice that the heading stays in the box, but the lat light comes on, telling us that the lateral control program is looking for something. And if you actually come down here, you can actually see very clearly on our PFD that heading is the active mode, and nav is going to be the mode it's looking for. Now, if you look really carefully here, you'll notice that the desired course that we're trying to travel on is a chilling right over here on the left. Now, as we take this gentle left turn, when we finally get ourselves lined up with it, what you'll actually observe is that this heading mode will shut off, and it'll switch over to navigation mode. Now, in a Boeing, you have a lot of other toys to play with. You have uh, the ability to basically do uh, control wheel steering and stuff like that. Uh, we do not have that on the Airbus 330, which is, eh, it, I guess it doesn't really matter because it's fly-by-wire. I don't know. I, I, I like it on little planes. I guess it doesn't make sense. But anyway, let's keep talking. So now that you understand how the roll programs work, uh, keep in mind at any point, you can always come in here and pull this thing back out again if you need to go ahead and set a specific heading. You can see here that I'm basically on course. Actually, 50 degrees is probably a little bit better. So I'll pop that over 50 real quick. Delightful. And now uh, you can see we're sailing towards uh, 50 degrees. And of course, when we get close enough, like I said, the navigation mode will flip over and it'll hold that. Let's take a look at our altitude controls now. Now, keep in mind, I have not touched the throttle yet, uh, other than setting it to climb mode, because that's all we needed to do. There's a couple handy-dandy things you'll notice here. First of all, you've got the actual altitude selection knob. Now, behind this knob is this little button here. If you click on it, you can actually switch between going up by hundreds, or you can go up by thousands. And it's kind of a handy little knob. Personally, I not really need the 100 very often in an airliner, but I suppose it can happen from time to time. Let me go switch this over to uh, inches of mercury, because that's the one I do understand. <laughs> Bald eagles per square uh, uh, McDonald's or something like that. I don't know. The next thing you're going to see is you're going to see your altitude controls. These are basically your pitch programs inside of this aircraft. Now, there's a couple different options we have here. The default pitch program is flight level change, which simply means this aircraft is going to attempt to climb at whatever thrust you've dialed in. So, for example, I've got myself on climb thrust. The desired altitude is 27,000 feet. If I look over here, you can see open climb is selected and it's doing an altitude. Well, let's say I wanted to climb at a specific speed. What I can do here is I can come over here and I can actually change the mode on this. Now, where this gets a little tricky is it's the push-pull again. So if I middle mouse button on this, you can see that it sets the vertical speed option. So for example, if let me say I want to climb at 2,000 feet per minute, I can come in here and use my mouse wheel to set that to 2,000 feet per minute like that. Now, the cool thing here is you'll now notice we've got vertical speed, 2,000 altitude. This creates an interesting problem for the airplane because we're trying to hold that climb thrust as we're going up. So that means something's got to change. So kind of keep that in mind when you do that. Now, the cool thing is if I come back over here and I right-click on this again, you'll see it immediately levels us off at that specific altitude. And now, the cool thing is you'll notice our engines are actually spooling down quite smoothly, exactly like we wanted them to do. So be careful. Now, if I middle mouse button, which is pushing it in, which you'll observe here, is we 
still hold that particular altitude. If I right click again, you can see we have no control over this. It's just simply going to say vertical speed zero. And again, left click, right click, nothing is going to change here. This is one of those interesting little things you have to be very, very cautious of when you're fiddling with it. Now, when we come over here back to my altitude control, if I middle mouse button this, you'll notice it switches back to flight level change. And you can see that we start to climb. Our th engines are going to start picking up their thrust again in order to get us up again. And you can see exactly how that whole operates uh, pretty much instantaneously. So as weird as it sounds, if you want to get back to flight level change button, this is actually the one that you've got to hit for that particular purpose. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. So if you're comfortable with all those so far, we're definitely ready to move on to the next one, which is going to be this lovely button here, which is speed and Mach. When you push this button, it simply will change the display of speed Mach. To the right of it, however, is the speed control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, I'm going to right click on it, and you'll observe nothing happens. So if you middle mouse button on it, it brings up a menu. I pulled it towards me. Remember, pull is middle, push is right click. When I do that, I can now pick my speed. So for example, let's say I actually wanted to climb at 310 knots, for example. I could dial in 310 knots, and you can see over here on my left that this now does throttle climb, open climb out, and you can see that the select speed, which is what this little blue triangle is telling us right now, is now 310 knots. Keep in mind, at any time, I can come back here and right click, which means now the computer has control over the desired speed. Now, one of the things you probably are sitting here going, okay, I'm, I'm, I kind of I get, I get the cut of your jib, but does that mean you really have to spend a long time kind of setting up the computer? Yes, you need to spend a very long time setting up the computer. Otherwise, a lot of these automatic modes won't work. It's not to say they don't work. It's just to say they won't work well. Now, let's go ahead and get to our top of descent and watch the next set of problems. All right, let's start thinking about making our way back down. So, of course, what we need to do is we have all of our options for going up as we do down. So I can come over here and select my altitude I'd like to go down to. Let's say I want to come down to, I think it's about 2,500 feet. So I can go to uh, 2,000, switch this over to this mode, crank it up to 2,500. And then when I'm ready, of course, all I have to do is go ahead and decide what mode I'm going to do. Now, as before, if I am to go over here and to right click on this, you're telling the computer that you now have control over things. Now, the interesting thing is as soon as that happened, you'll observe that the engines start to slow down. You'll notice over here on the left, thrust descent popped up and descent popped up and we're starting to make our way down directly. Now, unlike the other Airbuses, uh, we don't have an XPED button over here to make it go down quicker. But you can see here, this aircraft is now making its descent based on what it needs to do for the particular approach. Speaking of approach, let's get that all squared up while we're kind of waiting on our way down. And again, uh, we can talk about the FMS for hours and hours, and I know it's not called an FMS, but that's okay. So what I'd like to do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and take a look what we have for our approach options. We'll go ahead and press perf. We have our descent. Uh, we'll take a look at our next phase. We have our approach. Uh, we can dial in uh, whatever we need to Niner point five one is going to be at my destination there. And of course, so we have the ability to kind of come through and dial this in. One of the cool things is the computer will actually dial in all of our ILS critical information. You can see it's 109.10. And it also tells us what the course is built right in here. So in the event that we actually need to go ahead and do this, we have the ability to do it. Another thing that you actually find very interesting is in the event that you need to do VOR navigation, you actually have the ability to come in here and dial in the course that you'd want to actually follow. Now, the reason this is critical is if, again, you lose your GPS or something like that, or you need to do like a VOR approach, this is actually where you're going to come in and dial those details in. And of course, with those in there, you can actually do things like follow localizers and stuff like that, which is going to be a little bit different than probably what you're used to in other aircraft. Let's get a little closer to the ground. All right, we're getting pretty close. So one of the things we like to do on our approach here is we're going to go ahead and press the LS button. And what that's going to do is open up the ILS display. So we have a pretty good idea of what we want to do here. And as you can see very clearly, uh, we're off to the right, which checks because we're kind of hitting it from this side. And of course, uh, one of the things we want to do is start slowing down. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pull the control out and I'm going to start manually slowing this aircraft down substantially as we make our approach. That's going to make it a little bit smoother for our actual landing here. Now, the cool thing is we already know what our approach speed is supposed to be. So a lot of times air traffic control will give you a call and say, you know, reduce speed to 205 knots or minimum or something along those lines. And that will give you the opportunity to basically go in here and dial that in. Don't be surprised if you have to do that component. You also have to be very mindful that when you are on approach, that you're going to be setting your speed to whatever your appropriate approach speed is based on the flap setting that you have. Speaking of which, it's a good time to go ahead and click in that first notch of flaps there, kind of get everything uh, sort of ready to go. And you can see there's that little warning right there, just sort of chilling. Again, at any time, I can come over here and I'll go ahead and I'll hit it the right click and that will put it on automatic mode. And you can see here the automatically selected speed is actually about 195, which uh, checks out. So it actually slowed down quite nicely there. And again, depending on the needs of air traffic control, depending on the needs of the, uh, the company or the virtual airline you're flying with or anything along those lines. Again, it's just a good idea to slow down. So I'm in a good spot here. This is a really, really good angle to go ahead and begin our approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and press the approach button. 
Now, this is a very, very impressive automatic pilot when it comes to landing this aircraft. It will not be the world's smoothest automatic landing, but uh, we cannot complete a flight with this thing without demonstrating how incredible it is. So what you're going to see here is a couple different options. Uh, you're going to see the fact we're still in descent mode, or we're waiting on an altitude, we're waiting for glide slope, we're waiting for localizer. We are in single channel autopilot. Oops, speed out just clicked. And of course, we can take a look over here. We're still on auto thrust. Autopilot 1 is engaged, and we have a minimum selected pretty good to go. So what I'm watching now is as we get very close to you, <laughs> you'll watch our ILS marker here, our localizer, actually start to swing this way. You'll also notice that our glide slope is going to start slowly hiking its way downwards as we get lined up. So that's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Good time to go ahead and get that second click of flaps down. Oh, this is pretty good. Get that nice and smooth. And again, you'll notice here that we're holding at this constant speed here. Now, we're also dangerously close to uh, kind of violating our speed. As a matter of fact, we did just violate our speed. So let's go ahead and uh, pull this out and go ahead and take manual control here. Uh, we're going to get to our approach speed now, which is pretty slow today. So I'm just going to dial that in. And as we take this nice gentle turn and start lining up for our actual approach, you'll see that our glide slope is about all set. You'll also notice that our localizer is just about ready to get captured. So localizer has been captured here. Uh, the glide slope in just a few moments. You can still see that it's chilling on that color blue. We're basically waiting, but you can see we're basically perfectly lined up here. I like to put my wheels down as soon as I hit that second dot there. Again, depending on uh, your airline procedures, depends on the weather. And you can see your glide slope is captured. You can see localizer is captured. So we are completely in control. I should say, we're not in control. Well, I feel in control, but the aircraft is now doing the deed here. All right, landing gear are down. Checked. Uh, signs are on. Cabin check. Flaps to the landing position. Okie doke. Let's uh, start slowing down a little more here. Get those last clips of flaps in. All right, the cabin will call me in a few moments and tell me that they're ready to go. Looks good. Q&H looks good. We're going to go ahead and get some landing lights on. Looks good. Looks good. All set. Looks good. Okay, I like that. I like that. Cool. Oh, we should be telling people to uh, you know, stow their devices and everything. Now, as we look out the window here, we can see very clearly the uh, lovely runway waiting for us. Now, the interesting thing is if you've done everything well, you will observe that your throttles are still on the CL position. <laughs> It's just kind of a neat little quirk of uh, this particular style of aircraft, and it actually works very, very well for our purposes. So I'm just kind of relax ah, and just kind of enjoy uh, looking out the window here. Uh, we've got our speed set. Uh, I've got my hands and the controls ready to take over at a moment's notice. Uh, we're going to let this one auto land today, so it's going to be a little bumpy, but it's um, going to demonstrate just how smooth this aircraft really can be when you set it up properly. Looks good. Looks good. 1,500 feet gear last check medium auto brake we have plenty of 2800 meters which is plenty these are looking good these are looking good look how the game now decides to save <laughs> it saves before we crash land right one thing i miss though is they don't have the uh, nice uh, heads up display here but that's okay oh yes this is just relaxing isn't it speed run <laughs> love that stuff like how the autopilot's like are you sure about that i'm like yeah i'm fine 500. All right, we'll let the autopilot pilot have a kind of more relaxing approach here. So you want to take your hand and you want to put your hand right on the throttle and you want to get ready whatever button that you have as far as uh, your reversers goes. Because even though it will put you on the ground, you still have to do that part yourself, which is kind of nice. There's our minimum warning, our 200 feet, turning orange and yelling at us. This would be a good time to go around. If you get the little wiggle, uh, I call that the Airbus wiggle. Don't worry about that too much. I'll take over. I didn't like that. And yeah, we're just going to go ahead. 20, 10. Always be ready to take over. Go ahead and press the th reverse. Very nice. Very nice. So as always, uh, whenever you're doing any approach, always be ready to take over at a moment's notice. And you can see we got a little bit of wiggle waggles at the end there, but nothing too bad. Reverse the re release the reversers. Go ahead and slap that on. It's a good time to tell your co-pilot to go ahead and tap the uh, lovely control above your head to go ahead and set your um, automatic uh, APU to kick on. But as you can see, the autopilot really isn't that scary. It's just a matter of, again, remembering you're still the one flying the planes, number one. And number two is it's very similar to the other philosophies. Uh, once you've dialed everything in the computer, as long as nothing changes, it all works really, really well. Enjoy.